What's going on everyone? It's Sean from All Things EV and man am I glad to be back in the saddle doing some videos for you all and as you saw probably in my last video uh, I've been busy, busy with real estate and uh, this summer season is where I do probably 60 to 70 percent of my business so it's incredibly important to make hay while there is daylight because the uh, slower months are definitely in the winter. Nonetheless, I'm coming at you with a video about Tesla's demand. Is there a demand problem? That's the question that I want to address in this video. And I want to preface it by talking about Tesla's Q2 production and sales numbers. Actually, more sales numbers because that's really what matters the most, in my opinion, is getting those vehicles into the hands of customers. So is there a demand problem for Tesla? I'm excited to bring you some great charts and graphs, and uh, I've spent a lot of time on this. So if you enjoy this at any point now or by the end of the video, hit the like button and uh, subscribe if you're a new visitor. So let's jump in. There was a lot of speculation prior to the Q2 sales numbers as to whether Tesla was going to see an increase, decrease, or flatline in terms of how many vehicles they delivered. In fact, a lot of the critics said that they weren't going to do it, that it was going to be an equally terrible quarter, just like Q1 2019. And to many people's surprise, Tesla dominated. They had a best quarter ever for the company in terms of number of vehicles delivered and the stock price I think reflects that a lot of the uh, investor community really really liked that idea so let's go through some of those numbers model s and x production came in at 14,517 deliveries was 17,650 model 3 came in at uh, production levels of 72,531 deliveries 77,554 and a total for the quarter of 87,048 vehicles on the production side and delivery 95,200. So congratulations Tesla on this. This was a lot of hard work, a lot of long hours and I know a lot of you who work for Tesla sacrificed a lot to reach this goal. So congratulations, and it sounds like a lot of you will be getting a bonus, which is always great to be rewarded for all of your hard work. Now, how do I personally interpret this? Because um, there's a lot of ways to look at this. There's a quarter over quarter change, there's a year over year change, and then there's a seasonal change. All three of these, I think, are incredibly important to look at, and not just one factor, but all three in determining is there a demand problem for Tesla? So let's jump into each of those three things. So quarter over quarter, SNX saw an increase of 46% in deliveries. Model 3 saw a 52% quarter over quarter increase in deliveries. Year over year, though, SNX saw a 21% drop, but Model 3, a 320% increase year over year and that is just really a factor of last year Tesla was still trying to figure out their 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 production numbers now the seasonal piece I think is important to also consider so there's a few things that, that I'll add here. Do sales consistently dip around the same time every month, year or quarter? Is there a trend with a drop in deliveries? So where does this no demand thing come from that critics talk a lot about and really put a lot of light on? It appears it came from the huge month over month drop from Q4 2018 to Q1 2019. From December of last year to January of this year, S&X saw a 56% drop. Model 3 saw a 20% drop and a lot of critics associated this huge drop with the $7,500 US federal tax credit cutting in half at the end of 2018. They surmise that the only reason people were buying Teslas was because of the US federal tax credit and completely ignored all the other selling points of electric vehicles, which I think is just nonsense. Number one, Tesla doesn't just sell in the United States. There's many other countries that they're selling vehicles in. And so I think that that's great. I think it's great to diversify and uh, spread those eggs out over a multitude of baskets for that reason, so that they're not dependent on that $7,500. I also think that there are many, many great benefits to electric vehicles, in particular Tesla, that gasoline variants do not 
offer. Though the tax credit may have played a significant role in pulling sales from early 2019 into the last month of 2018, Tesla also made some significant changes to S and X at the beginning of this year that I think significantly impacted the sales for Q1. The primary change resulted in them removing the least expensive 75 kilowatt hour battery pack and only offering the higher price 100 kilowatt hour options in early January. Later on that quarter, they eventually reintroduced a smaller range S and X in the new vernacular, similar to Model 3, standard range and long range. These changes caused a drop in average sales per quarter from about 25 thousand units in 2018 to 15,000 units in 2019. To give you a visual for this, here is a chart of S and X combined global sales. Now, Model S started production in late 2012 and then late 2015 is when Model X began production and you can see that jump. But for the last couple of years, we've seen this more or less a stagnation. And then as I mentioned before, that Q4 2018 to Q1 2019, there was a huge drop. Despite Elon Musk's most recent reaffirmations that there are no plans to do a quote unquote refresh of the S and X, I do think it makes sense to continue to bring them more in line with Model 3 feature suite. A horizontal center screen, updated HVAC, and battery architecture to facilitate the 250 kilowatt charging speeds. Comparing the flatline of the Model S and X quarterly global sales to Model 3, we see a completely different story. It's almost like a rocket ship trajectory. I mean, this thing is just exponential growth. Yes, there was a big drop in Q1, but you can see that that growth is back up again, which is really, really fantastic to see. Let's also take a look at some of Tesla's competitors for the Model 3, the A4 and the 3 Series. Now, I did try and pull some numbers for some other ones, but without success, there were some inconsistencies with, for example, the Mercedes C-Class as well as the Lexus IS. Strangely, Lexus in particular does not reveal individual vehicle quarter over quarter growth like all the others. Mercedes C-Class did, but I found some inconsistencies with how they were um, showing the numbers and therefore I opted to leave them out. It is important to know that when I looked at the data for C-Class, they were best in class in terms of number of vehicles sold quarter over quarter consistently above 100,000 vehicles. So in terms of demand for the Model 3, you see here when compared to the A4 and 3 series, they are nearly competitive with these gasoline variants. And I suspect very soon that they will be higher than these gasoline variants. This is a huge problem for these traditional automakers because you can see how quickly Tesla ramped up the sales and production of the Model 3. Within a matter of about a year, they were competing with legacy automakers and their gasoline variants. But to get back to the original question, does Tesla have a demand issue? The Model 3, absolutely not. I mean, they, they are continuing to ramp up not only production, but sales. And it's also important to note that for the first year and a half that Tesla was producing the Model 3, they weren't selling globally. They were only selling in North America. It was only this past January, or this really quarter one, 2019, that they started ramping this up to global sales and delivery. So I expect for the Model 3 to continue to be a bestseller, especially outside of North America, where people people typically prefer smaller vehicles. With Model S and X on the other hand, it does appear that those vehicles are relatively flatlining in comparison to the very strong growth of the Model 3. Now, one of the other potential reasons why we've seen this flatline in Model S and X growth is because you've got Model 3 and people may be choosing the Model 3 over the S and X just because it's at a better price point and maybe the size of the vehicle is a little bit better for them. So 15,000 units per quarter for the Model S and X may, may be the new norm. I hope not because they were consistently doing 25,000 units a quarter and I seem to remember maybe a couple of 
Well, maybe it was about a year ago Elon Musk reiterated that they don't anticipate reaching any more than 25,000 units per quarter. Now, things can change based on what they see and based on ramping up of lower priced vehicles. So keep that in mind as well. It doesn't necessarily mean that people don't want the Model S and X. It just may mean that the Model 3 is a little bit more appealing to a larger portion of people. So far, Tesla has sold slightly more than 158,000 vehicles this year. If Tesla is to reach their low end goal of 360,000 units in 2019, they need to sell an average of 100 1,900 vehicles in Q3 and Q4. 5,000 more vehicles per quarter than this past Q2 quarter, something that appears to be within reach. And it's also important to note that statistically, Q3 and Q4 are Tesla's best quarters of the year. So they're really moving into a strong portion of the year where I think they'll be able to move a lot of vehicles. The other thing that I'm paying real close attention to is this change that Tesla just made last night where they removed the standard range options for S and X again. And I couldn't help but think that Tesla is readying the production lines for another update for the Model S and X. And yes, I know what you're thinking. Elon Musk said that there's going to be no refresh anytime soon, but I would ask you to consider how does Elon Musk define a refresh. My theory is that Tesla and Elon Musk define a refresh by traditional automotive terms where automakers will completely redesign exterior and interior vehicles every four years. We all know that Tesla does not do that. They make small incremental changes. The last time that Tesla did away with an option for the Model S and X was at the beginning of the year. And of course, history tells us that they took away that 75 kilowatt hour battery pack to reintroduce a newer version with a different vernacular as well as increased range. The question that I've got for you and that I'd love for you to send off in the comments down below is based on what Tesla is offering right now with the S, X, and 3, is it enough to get Tesla to that low end goal of 360,000 cars delivered in 2019? This is Sean Mitchell, All Things EV. Thank you so much for tuning in again. It's good to be back in the saddle of creating videos. I've got some awesome content to come here over the next month or two. So get ready, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see everyone on the next video.